Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a non-standard equation. And the reason why I call this non-standard is we have an exponential equation on the right hand side and on the left we have a polynomial. So we're not going to be able to solve this by, you know, just analytical means or just like normal methods. We kind of have to use a different approach. So I'll talk about a couple different things and at the end I'll show you two graphs because we can look at this equation from two different angles. Now, one of the things that I want to bring up first before we get into the solution of the problem is a function called Lambert's W function. So Lambert's W function, we I think I made a couple of videos on that and you can check them out. Uh, maybe I should probably make a separate list, maybe like a playlist or something. Anyways, so if you have an equation like something like let's say x or I should probably generalize this more like t times e to the power t and let's say this is equal to some number k and you're trying to solve for t you can basically use Lambert's w function because what that does is basically you know the function f of t equals t to the power t right if we invert this function the inverse of this function on the intervals it's defined, of course, uh, is called Lambert's W function. So in other words, F inverse of T would be uh, Lambert's W function. And Lambert's, what that does is basically F inverse or Lambert is just going to take T to the T and it's going to turn into a T. So when you have a product like this, the output is going to be just a single T. So am I able to get that from here? That's what we're going to explore first. And then we'll get into the actual solutions. Okay, cool. So am I able to get something like that here? Well, there's a little hope because I have E and I have an X. So hopefully I can put those together. Let's take a look. X equals E to the power 1 minus X squared, which can be written as E over E to the power X squared. Let's go ahead and cross multiply here. That's going to give us x times e to the power x squared equals e. Wow, we're so close, right? So if we had x times e to the x, that would be real cool because I could just w it and that would give me x. As you know, Lambert w or just product log is what it's called, another name for it. So the product log of x e to the x would be x in this case, right? But I don't have that. I have x times e to the x squared. So here's another issue that I want to bring up. Can I just multiply both sides by x? Because sometimes that's what we do. And then from here now we're going to get x squared e to the x squared equals ex. And if I w, if I apply w on both sides, the left hand side is going to give me something nice, which is x squared. Because if you uh, w x squared e to the x squared. Now this is basically replacing the t here, right? The t we were talking about. That should give me an x squared, but it's going to end up with a w of ex. What is w of ex? Can we evaluate it? That's a good question. All right, anyways, I'm going to leave it at that. Unfortunately, we don't have a straightforward answer here, but let me tell you at the same time, if we had x equals 1 e to the power 1 minus x, then you could easily do this. Uh, you could write this as x e to the x equals e and then use Lambert's w function on both sides and you would get an answer from here. Anyways, let's get back to the original problem. We have x equals e to the power 1 minus x squared. So I can look at it from two different perspectives like I said earlier. So the first idea is just look treating this equation as is. We have a polynomial and we have an exponential. But what is so cool about this exponential is that this is actually a decreasing function. Or is it? It kind of looks like decreasing. And you know how I came up with that idea. And this is just a guess, by the way, at this point. Because the exponent has a negative in front of the variable. So I'm thinking as x increases, y should decrease, right? Because if x increases, then x squared is going to be increasing. And 1 minus that is going to be decreasing. So does that mean this is a decreasing function? So in order to understand if a function is decreasing or increasing on a certain interval, use the first derivative. Because if a function is decreasing, then when you draw the tangent lines to it, 
they're going to have negative slopes, which means the first derivative is going to be negative. And on the other hand, if a function is increasing, then the first derivative is going to be positive because the tangent lines are going to have positive slope. Make sense? So let's go ahead and take a look at this function, f of x equals e to the power 1 minus x squared. We're going to go ahead and differentiate it. Now to differentiate e to the power some function like u, you are going to you are going to differentiate it like e to the u times u prime. This is uh, coming from the chain rule, which says, you know, the derivative of the inside. So it's going to be e to the power 1 minus x squared multiplied by negative 2x. So in other words, f prime is not always positive or negative. It just depends on the sign of x because this is not going to be negative or even 0. So if x is positive, f prime is going to be negative because we have a negative 2x. If x is negative, f prime is going to be positive. In other words, our function is going to be decreasing for positive x values and increasing for negative x values. So what does that kind of tell you? So you kind of have like an increasing function and then decreasing function. Kind of like a parabola, not exactly, but sort of like a parabola. And that's why it's important to understand this here because 1 minus x squared is like this. When you do e to the power, it's going to uh, exhibit a similar behavior. Anyways, so that should give you an idea. At zero, something is going on. So we have a function that's something like that. And we're going to look at the graph to see the details. But what is happening on the left-hand side? Well, if we define this function to be g of x equals x, then g of x equals x is just a linear function with a positive slope. So its graph is just going to be like this. So that's an increasing function. So if we can make the right-hand side, oops, if we can make the right-hand side decrease at some point, then we're going to have a solution. Make sense? And the solutions can be obtained just by guessing. And of course, it's going to show you one or more solutions. But at this point, notice that if x is equal to 0, that's one of the values we usually check, then we're going to have 0 equals e to the power 1, which is not true. If x is 1, and by the way, 1 is motivated by the solution to the equation 1 minus x squared. If x is 1, then we're going to get e to the power 1 minus 1, which is e to the 0. And that's equal to 1, which is exactly x. Make sense? So x equals 1 is a solution. And we're going to demonstrate that it's the only solution in a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look at the alternative approach. So we have this function. And then we can go ahead and ln both sides, the natural log. And this you can bring down ln x equals 1 minus x squared because ln e is 1. And then from here, you can look at the behavior of two functions. One of them is ln x, which is the log. The other one is a parabola, which is negative x squared plus 1. So it's going to look like this pretty much, right? And when, you, when I show you the graph, it's going to look nicer. But let's just say pretend it's like this. And they're going to intersect at a single point because this is going to stay in the first and fourth quadrant and our parabola is going to be split up into two pieces. Make sense? I know this is not the exact good graph, but um, you'll get a better idea. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the two graphs that I was talking about. So y equals e to the power 1 minus x. It's kind of like a bell curve, isn't it? Maybe it's similar to the equation of the bell curve. And as you can see, it's decreasing for positive x values, but our linear function is always increasing. And one of the things is, this function can never be below the x-axis, so there's no way it's going to intersect y equals x again. So there's only one solution. As you can see, x equals 1 is a solution. Make sense? Great. Let's go ahead and look at the other approach. And uh, my graph wasn't accurate. I did it on purpose. As you can see here, they both have the same x-intercept at x equals 1. Therefore, x equals 1 is the only solution to this equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.